Hi everybody and welcome to my third of three videos about this, the Canon EOS 1V. This video is going to focus exclusively on everything that is underneath this door. All these buttons and what they do and how to use them. There's so much going on underneath that little flap that it needs its own video. So you can see under here there are clear multiple exposure. Uh, MFN, MFN stands for personal function groups and CFN stands for custom function groups. So MFN, these button, these functions really most of them need to be changed with external software and your camera connected to external software, which is a little bit, a lot, I won't lie, it's a lot frustrating. So these MFN button functions have to be accessed through software, either the Meta35 software or through Canon software. CFN, the custom functions, those can be accessed, all of them in the camera. Most of these MFN ones cannot be accessed in the camera. So this video is going to look specifically at the CFN custom functions. Before adjusting your custom functions, you want to make sure that you don't have any film in the camera because at least one, maybe a couple more of these cannot be changed if there's film in the camera. So the first thing you want to do is open up the side panel and push the CFN button, which is the one on the top. You can see when you do that, it brings up a screen that says F-01. For everything we do, we're going to go into the custom functions button, which is the top button in the side panel. Now there is F0 through F19. There are 19 custom functions. And yeah, we're going through all of them. So before we go into the custom functions menu, there are a couple of user functions I want to go into and access first. We're going to push the MF button once and now twice. We're going to bring up PC. You use this to connect to a PC to transfer data from the camera to your computer. Without film, after PC, you can go in and see this screen. The 15 is your user selectable two digit code, which you change by using the command wheel here. 227 is a sequential number that the camera assigns. You cannot change that. But you can adjust this code, the 15, anywhere from 0 to 99. Next thing we're going to do is push the MFN button again. This brings up your current date and year. Now we go into PF0. And these are some of your user modes. You can select here PF0 shows you which modes you have as in your custom functions uh, as default or custom set. If there's a black bar under it, that goes from 1 to 19. The black bar means you have a custom setting. The no bar means you have a default setting. Adjusting the, the user settings benefits from having software to do it. The manual will tell you which one, what these different functions are. Next thing we're going to do is go into the custom functions menu with the CFN button. So we're going to hit the CFN button, which is here on top. So here we are in the custom functions menu. This is the first one, F0. And you'll see a lot of the custom functions written as F dash number dash number. F dash 0 dash 1 means function 0, option 1. F dash 0 dash, dash 0 means function 0, option 0. This, I believe, is automatically selected by the camera because I can't get it to change. 0 means that you're using a new laser matte screen and one means that it's for the standard old laser matte screen. It defaults to, to uh, one since the standard screen in the camera is the uh, old laser matte screen, one of them. If you have a different screen, you want to check the instruction manual on page 127 for which of these functions to use. And also remember, this has to be set correctly for your camera to work correctly which is why I believe it is that this is automatically selected by the camera, at least for the default screen. To get to the next function, you use the command wheel here on top. F1-0. This means that your high-speed rewind is enabled. 
and as soon as you finish a roll of film, it's going to rewind into the camera. If you set this to one, that means that your high speed film advance and rewind are disabled. So it's silent film advance, the film does not rewind when you're done with the roll. Two means that you will automatically rewind your film and that it's uh, silent rewind. And three means that it is silent rewind, but you have to push the manual rewind button to rewind it. I like silent rewind, so I'm gonna leave it on two because I also want it to be automatic. Function two, film leader position upon rewind. One, leaves a leader out, and zero means that it fully rewinds the film. I'm gonna leave it to zero because I want it to fully rewind the film when I'm done. Function three, DX code setting, zero enables your DX code reading, and one disables it. Uh, for 99% of situations, I don't think there's a reason to disable your DX code reading since you can override it anyway. So in general, your best bet's just to leave this at zero and enable DX code reading. The only benefit to putting this to one is if you're going out on a shoot and you have 20 rolls of 400 ISO film you wanna to push to 3200 and you don't wanna to have, to cha have to change the setting every single time you load a new roll. Function four. Autofocus lock, auto exposure lock. Zero means that the shutter button perform, performs auto focus lock and the auto exposure lock performs auto exposure lock. And that even if you focus on a subject and it moves, if it goes into different lighting, the camera will take a meter reading when it takes the picture and use the, the appropriate lighting for the, use the appropriate settings for the lighting when you take the picture, even if your subject runs from bright sun to, deep, to dark shade. One means that your shutter button performs AE lock, and your AE lock button performs both AEL and AF lock, auto exposure and autofocus lock. And this allows users to autofocus at one point in the scene with the asterisk button and obtain auto exposure lock with the shutter button, and it turns off shutter autofocus, which is a bit strange. Uh, I found this very difficult to use when I tried it. F4-2, the shutter button performs autofocus and the auto exposure lock button performs autofocus lock. So if your autofocus will, shoot, will change if you push the shutter button, uh, it will not lock your focus in m option two. Option three, your shutter button performs auto exposure uh, lock and the auto exposure lock performs AE and AF linking uh, with real time auto exposure. And this works for subjects that move and stop and move and stop again like pets and kids. In general, mode zero is the best one to use for this function. Uh, it applies to the most situations and applies most of the time. F5, manual mode operation. F5-0, the top dial sets the shutter speed, this one right here, and the back dial sets the aperture. Now this only applies if you're shooting in full manual. F5-1, the top dial sets the aperture and the back dial sets the shutter speed. F5-2, works in the exact same way as F1. This is your shutter speed and this is your aperture. But this allows the aperture to be changed if there's no lens on the camera. So if you know that you're gonna switch lenses but you want to go to a different aperture with the new lens, you can change the aperture setting while there's no lens on the camera. F5-1 also works with auto exposure bracketing, which makes it different from F5-2, which works in the exact same way, but does not work with auto exposure bracketing. And three works in exactly the same way, but honestly, really redundant. <laughs> it's really redundant. There should be two settings on this. Yes, you can change the aperture with a lens detached, or no, you can't. Like this is one of the many things about this camera which is infuriating. It's so incredibly confusing to use sometimes. And the manual 
does not help. <laughs> so at any rate, your best bet for this is just to leave it in one, two, or three. <laughs> for most of the cases, it's for most people, it's just not gonna matter. F6, exposure level increments. Zero is third stop increments for both shooting and exposure compensation. One is full stop increments and two is half stop increments. So whatever you're most comfortable with, I tend to like third stop increments, which is the default. This allows you to select how quickly you can change between settings and stops and things like that in both apertures and shutter speeds when you're in manual aperture or shutter priority modes. F7. This is for USM lens electronic manual focusing. You can use electronic manual focusing that is enabled with zero. If you switch it to one, it's disabled, but enabled until focus is achieved if, one, if F4.1 or F4.3 is turned off. Very confusing. And two is that it's disabled always. F8 is your frame count sequence. This is a useful function. It allows you to change between zero, the default, meaning that it counts up from one, one through 36, F8-1, which counts down from either 36 or 24, depending on what the DX code on the film says, or two, which displays frames in the same way as the EOS 1N. It says F if you have more than 10, 10 or more frames, and then it counts down starting at nine. I happen to like to know exactly where I am on a roll of film, so I like to leave that at zero. F9, auto exposure bracketing sequence. This is another useful one. It allows you to, cha to change the way that bracketing is done. So there's four options, zero, one, two, and three. And zero simply displays them uh, normal, under, over, then one is normal, under, over, then turns off auto exposure bracketing. Two is under, over, I'm sorry, under normal over, and then three is under nor normal over, then off. The difference between one and two and three and four is whether auto exposure bracketing stays on or is automatically turned off after the sequence is complete. I like three because I, I like it to turn off automatically uh, when I'm done doing the auto exposure bracket. F10, focusing point flashing mode. So there are four options in here. So what zero means is that when you have an autofocus confirmation, your camera will flash the box on that autofocus point. One disables that so that your camera will not flash an autofocus point. Two, there we go, enables the autofocus flash, but with uh, dim flashing. And three, uses a bright flash. I happen to like three because I want it to shout at me, hey, numpty, here's where, uh, here's where it's focused. F11, focusing point selector. In mode zero is the default way to control your focusing point selector. So you push this button outside of this menu and it brings up your focusing point selector inside your viewfinder when you're looking through it. And so, in the default mode, you use the top and the back button to select your focusing points. In one, you use the plus minus button as well as the wheels. And these just help you control how you get around the focusing point, in uh, focusing points as you select them. In two, the rear dial functions as a standalone sole source dial for horizontal selection and the assist button, which is this one right here on the back, plus the top wheel selects vertical points. It's a bit, bit wonky to use. And three, you use the FEL button, hold that down and use the wheels. Honestly, zero is the best. I'm not sure why they put these other modes in here. Using zero, you hold down the focusing point button and then adjust it with these wheels. So with uh, function 11, your focus point selection, honestly, your best bet's just to leave it in zero. The other ones are really kind of wonky, confusing, and cumbersome. 
Uh, this way is just the most intuitive uh, and easiest to get to, to learn to use. Function 12, mirror lockup. Zero is off, one is on. Uh, so you need to know that on or off means always on or off for every shot. If you turn it to on, and this is a good thing to do to, if you're going to do astrophotography, macro photography, or something like that, um, a good thing to enable. If you want to use the MLU, the mirror lockup, you want to press the shutter button. That locks the mirror up. Then you press it again to take a photo. Now the mirror will reset after about 30 seconds. If you don't take a photo, advance the film and not operate the shutter so you don't lose a frame, but it closes. Well, you do lose a frame, you just don't get an image on it. But then it closes. So if you're going to use MLU, don't, um, don't, don't leave it to on after you're done using mirror lockup. It's really kind of difficult that they put it in a menu. I accidentally turned that on. I thought I had broken, broken this loner camera for like half an hour. I was a, a slightly panicked <laughs> when I accidentally turned that on. Couldn't figure out why it wasn't working properly anymore. Um, at any rate, F13, focus point and meter linkage. So there are four options here. Now, when I, sh I said earlier in the, in the, when I said in the second video rather, that in spot metering mode, there's also a spot metering mode where you can link the AF point to your spot. This is where we're at. Zero enables all 45 autofocus points and links the spot meter to that AF point. So what that means is that if your autofocus point up here is in focus, you're going to meter off that point. If it's in focus here, you're going to meter off that point. So whichever one of your autofocus points is, in, is the one that is controlling the focus, that's what's going to control the meter. One, does that uh, one sets 11 autofocus points and links the spot metering to the active autofocus point. Two sets 11 autofocus points and links spot metering to the center autofocus point, not to the active one. So what that means is that let's say that this is your active autofocus point. You're going to meter off of the center autofocus point here, regardless of what's actually in focus. So if you're always metering off the center and it's very light and your auto active autofocus is in an area that's very dark, your subject's going to be over, uh, I'm sorry, underexposed. Unless you have a really specific reason to use only the center AF point as your autofocus point, I recommend shying away from, uh, sec from option two. F13-3 sets nine autofocus points and links your spot metering to the active autofocus point. So it's um, one, zero, one, and three rather, do the exact same thing of linking your autofocus point to your spot meter. It's just how many autofocus points are active. So I'm gonna leave it at zero because I wanna use all 45 autofocus points on this camera. Function 14, automatic reduction of fill flash output and that's either enabled or disabled. Uh, zero is enabled and one is disabled. If you disable it, this function prevents a subject in front of a strong backlight from being underexposed. So disabling this is generally a better choice unless you're controlling every aspect of your lighting very closely. Function 15, flash and shutter curtain sync. There's two options here, zero and one. Zero syncs your flash with the opening of the first shutter curtain, and one syncs your flash with the closing of the second shutter curtain. So if you are concerned about doing things with flash sync, especially if you have uh, longer flash times, this is where you'll get creative with that. If you're just gonna use standard flash sync, daylight sync, or studio sync, and you're not going to leave your shutter open for a half second or five seconds or something like that, then setting it to, uh, setting it to syncing it with the shutter curtain opening 
is a better option because you get all of the light out of the flash and you don't risk losing some of it as the shutter curtain closes. Function 16 is your safety shift. Zero is disabled, one is enabled. This changes the camera settings if the subject's lighting changes as the image is taken. So you can either enable that or disable that. I have it disabled. 17, focus point active area. Zero is one autofocus point, which is standard. And what that means is if you have an autofocus point up here where something is in focus, one autofocus point will be used to determine focus. If you go to one, now what you're doing is you have this one focus point up here. Now it's going to pick one, all four of the autofocus points above, below, left, and right of that one autofocus point to fine tune the autofocus. If you go to two, now it's going to pick however many more it needs in this area to fine tune your focus as needed to suit your lens's focal length. So I happen to like zero because I want to set a specific autofocus point and have that exact spot in the image be in sharpest focus. But this is largely a matter of personal preference and there's no right or wrong way to set your camera for this function. Function 18, switch over to registered focal point. Zero, one, and two, zero right now Change the registered focal point using the assist and AF point change buttons. A assist and AF point change buttons right here. So this allows you to change your autofocus point between one that you've set and an automatically selected one by pushing these buttons. Setting this to one allows you to perform that function pushing only the assist button and when you push it, it switches over and stays there with setting one. In two, it, you hold it to get it to switch over to the autofocus point, and when you release it, it switches back to the automatically selected autofocus point. Um, that's a whole lot of more complexity than I really want in my shooting. Um, I tend to leave this at zero because it's easier to use, and I don't have to also think about picking a manual autofocus point and how do I want to do it. This kind of function is useful if you're at, let's say, a horse race or a greyhound race, something like that, where you know where your focused subjects are going to be coming from, but you want to have focus over here on the left side of the frame when they enter. Okay, so you're going to man manually select that. Well, over on the right side, they've started to go around the curve, so your automatic focus can can pick that up as they go or vice versa, but you want to be able to switch between the two. That's what this function's really useful for, um, but that's a pretty, and there's other uses as well, but it's a fairly limited use function. F19, your lens autofocus stop button when function switching, wait, I don't understand what they mean by that. <laughs> lens autofocus stop button function switching. Ah, okay. So if your lens has an autofocus stop button, which none of mine do, zero means that your autofocus lock button stops autofocus. Autofocus lock, wherever that is. I think on the lens. One means that it, your autofocus only works when the autofocus over here button is pressed. Two, auto exposure lock if metering is active and that's useful when focusing and metering in different places. There we go, that's two. Three, allows you to switch from manual focus point selection to automatic focus point selection with uh, that AF button. Four, toggles your AF mode from one shot to servo uh, with the same button. And five, turns off the image stabilizer. So that's all buttons on the lens, even though it's touching this one right here periodically. It's all buttons on the lens. If your lenses, like none of mine, don't have those buttons, function 19 is basically useless to you. Um, so there you go. And now we're through all of the custom functions. And remember, for personal function groups, uh, if you want to set multiple custom functions like I have here, and you want to set multiple different groups, one for sports, one for 
plays, one for general shooting, whatever, street photography, whatever it is, you can do that, but it's, I recommend you do that with either the Canon software or something like Meta 35 because it's just a whole lot more user-friendly when you do that than trying to do it through the camera. I had a very hard time doing that with the camera and I strongly don't recommend doing personal function groups through the camera. Many items cannot be changed in camera as well when it comes to personal function groups and um, the instructions provide no insight in how to change the, some of those. Personal function groups were when we push the second button down here. Personal function group. There. And you know, go, you, you go straight from 1, 2, 3, 12, 19, 25, 29. There's just a whole bunch in there you can't even access without the software. So um, good on Canon for getting you to spend more money on their stuff after you buy this camera. So all, um, all personal opinions about that aside, this has been my third video on this very in-depth and extremely capable uh, and impressive piece of engineering uh, technology, the Canon EOS 1V. If this video and this series of videos was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track and producing content which is useful to you. If you have any questions or suggestions or want to point out errors in this video, which I assure you there easily could be. This custom function stuff was very difficult to understand and follow. Uh, by all means, do. Also, if you want to uh, talk about how to use personal function groups or anything like that, by all means, please leave a comment below about that. If you're an amateur photographer who has taken photos with this camera and would like to post a link to those photos in the video's description, please feel free to. If you have suggestions or comments for this video or future videos, um, by all means, please leave those and please set your comments settings to allow me to respond to them so I can. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do that by pushing the subscribe button and then you'll find out when I have more photography related videos. One last thing, thank you guys for watching. Take great photos. Whew. <laughs> there we go.